right? Man or yeah, woman, you know. <laughs> worst case, a little delay. Right. You know, best case, you you get through without having what? to do anything. But how about worst case? How about best case? Best case. Either way, you're gonna get your night wave approved in less than two weeks. Yeah. Even if you have to see it twice right now. <laughs> Welcome to Waiver Watch episode 23 on April 19th, 2020. We are 107 Waivers, and each week we bring to you some of the most interesting waivers granted by the FAA in the weeks prior. And without further ado, the approvals have been just, hmm, how do you say? <laughs> I'd say they're dark. They're dark. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> No pun intended, or maybe very dark. pun intended. <laughs> dark and stormy, now just dark. <laughs> yeah, so as always, uh, our agenda for the waiver watch here is weekly waiver totals. That's essentially it, and we will go into a little bit more. So as always, Jake, you hit us with the weekly waiver totals. Yeah, so we had 26 night waivers. That's it. That's 26 it. night waivers. <laughs> nothing <laughs> there else. Nothing else. <laughs> nothing else. This is, is it? this. I don't know when the last week has. Have we ever since we started waiver watch? I, has there ever been a week where there's only been night waivers? Not that I remember. So, this is the first. This is an odd week. Yeah. No high this, altitude. No pair of zero. No BV loss. Anything like that. Hmm. Nothing. Yeah. Night waivers are. Um, also, by the way, turning around like really quick. Uh, oh, days. yes. They, yes. It seems like the queue is short and uh, they're turning them around quick. So uh, now right. is definitely a chance and the right time to get that night waiver if you don't already have it. So Apparently, there's not a lot going in or they're staffed appropriately, which is amazing during this time as well, right? Because mm -hmm. this might be short lasted if these quarantines, stay at home orders go for too long. You know, I don't know if they'll furlough some people a little bit and scale back the workforce. But yeah, like you said, get them in now. You're getting them improved in less than a week. Like almost like I would almost be confident to say, I guarantee you if your waiver application is, you know, up to up to par, it'll be within a week for sure. Submit it on a one Monday, you'll get it by Friday, most likely. Yeah. It was like, uh, so this week is, yeah, kind of boring. So we were like, all right, let's just talk more about night waivers. So looking at who got the night waivers this week, there was 26 of them. Mm -hmm. And when I was scrolling through, one thing that just stood out is how many public safety organizations got them this week. So uh, just over a quarter, uh, there's about seven of them, went to either fire, police, or sheriff uh, mm -hmm. around the country. And I don't know if that is I guess we we don't normally look at this. So I'm not sure if that's high or low, but I'm just thinking with the COVID-19 situation, maybe more agencies are using drones to do certain things, um, mm -hmm. you know, go to calls at night. Maybe there's a ability to use less you know people and um, maybe with workforces uh, trying to rotate them or keep people safe and so on. I don't know. Not sure, maybe if there's a coincidence mm -hmm. there or a tie or anything or not, but it was just yeah, an it's, observation. And then looking at this, like the graph that you have, you know, put up on a on the website here, it is split though, like fifty fifty, where you have there's like a nice fifty fifty split. So public safety commercial companies um, are split fifty fifty with the single name waiver applications so yeah. you have the the blue section on that chart would be like the sole entrepreneurs you know that are mm -hmm. they've got their photography shop from what i've seen typically it's the names that dominate the 10729s single yeah. person entities yeah. are the ones that are getting those so and um, it's hard to know if that's uh on purpose or by accident <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. which we can segue because, into this right which yeah. is the issue two section We've always talked about how to properly name whenever you go through our night waiver program or any waiver with us. We always talk about how to properly name your 107 account um, so that you're not getting an RFI because if you have documentation, so say you have a company, uh, let's just use let's just use the example on the website. So if you're uh, ATL drone services, you have Michael Hunt as the responsible person. Now, if Michael Hunt would write his waiver application, 
in his person, uh, you know, Michael Hunt asks for a waiver to this, the FAA might uh, check you and say, hey, we noticed that your account name is Atlanta Drone Service and you don't mention this at all within your waiver application. Um, what do you, I mean, do you want to add something to that there, JK? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I was just looking at how dark my video is. Oh, okay. <laughs> we are not shooting at a normal time of day, so <laughs> pardon our dark video as, as the sun sets. But <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, so you have the part 107 account name. It's super important that these are in sync with what your documents are when you're writing. So, if you're, yep. let's say you're, you know, a Fortune 500 company and you're writing your waiver documents you want to make sure that you're listing your fortune 500 company it makes much more sense to list that big company name versus uh, a part 107 account name to be a responsible person's name it just if you have multiple people working underneath you it's an organ organization it's not a single person um so yeah go ahead and throw your two cents yeah. in there well and in, in the it's it is confusing in drone zone and, I, and so e even when we give out instructions, uh, sometimes people still miss them, but it's confusing on the drone zone side of it. And we've talked about this before. They in drone zone under your profile, you put your name, mm -hmm. but then the field that you fill out your company name in is called part 107 account name. So it's kind of nondescript. And so I think a lot of people just put their name and then they put their name again as right. they make their profile. They don't quite understand like what those two mean but mm -hmm. the issue two which we're saying should be your company that issue two is the part 107 account name so mm -hmm. i think part of it is just it's easy to mess up but it's also not um it doesn't say that in drone zone like this is this field is your issue two. make sure it's your company or whatever it's just mm -hmm. part 107 account name so um right. so make sure you're just paying attention to that when you're uh, requesting your waiver and um, and you won't mess up. But if you do, what happens, <laughs> right? Yeah, we've seen this a lot, right, Brent? What happens if you, if yeah. you mess that up? Certainly, if you do mess it up, and if the FAA person reviewing happens to be having a modestly bad day, they'll give you an R five, <laughs> and <laughs> you'll have two options. What I've seen, mm -hmm. what I've seen the most is you may cancel your application and resubmit. Mm -hmm. If your if your account name is wrong and you have a company name, basically you have to cancel and resubmit. Now, if you're mm -hmm. a person, they say change your account name to your to your name because it matches a responsible person, and it will be approved. Um, yeah. So it's just kind of interesting how it's like a double edge. Like if you're a company, too bad you're going back in the queue. Yeah. If you're a single person, it's okay, man. Just put your name here. We'll be fine. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. Man or yeah, woman, you know. <laughs> worst case, a little delay. Right. You know, best case, you you get through without having what? to do I anything. Mean, but how about worst case? How about best case, best case? Either way, you're going to get your night waiver approved in less than two weeks. Yeah. Even if you have to submit twice right now. Right. <laughs> so, yep. And this is, do you remember when, back when we first started, it was like a, a solid 30 days for sure, almost on the dot. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. between 27 and 30, like two days, depending on the weekends and all that stuff. Yeah. And then I remember when we got our first night waiver, our client got their first night waiver approved in 24 hours. We were like, what the hell just yeah. happened here? Like, and yeah. then that was when Kevin Morris had also had started mentioning around the new year that they were uh, bringing in some more resources, AKA yeah. people. Uh, so specifically they were definitely looking, they've got the resources covered for night waiver. So we're like, you know, can, like that's actually like cool, right? You can submit an application to a federal government uh, government body and yeah. they turn it around and process it within the week like that's amazing so yeah it's better than some stim checks that you <laughs> haven't got yeah yet. <laughs> yeah hopefully so, you didn't get yours mailed <laughs> yeah yeah good luck right <laughs> yeah but uh so, yeah no that is good um they're well staffed on the night waivers it would be nice if they were a little more staffed on the rest of them which maybe we'll segue into the next topic here yeah so, <laughs> yeah um hit us right with that now, title I, industry, love, I love the title yeah i love that title hit us with that the the industry may be in a little rut and maybe i should say again because <laughs> i think this happens 
there's kind of the mm -hmm. ebb and flow of things, but it feels like right now we're kind of back in a rut. So mm -hmm. there's really, we're going to say like four categories of waivers today, right now. Night waivers, they're just pumping them through, no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, pair of zero waivers, kind of the same deal. They take a little longer, but pretty repeatable. High altitude, we've seen quite a few of those this year. Uh, Mm -hmm. our, our buddy Travis at Freeport uh, definitely contributed to that, but there's been oh, others. Yeah. And then yeah. the fourth category we're just calling special. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could let you elaborate on yeah, that. Yeah, I like, I like this category the best. It yeah. is the too bad you're not big enough or too bad you're not connected to the right you know, IPP or PSP, and these are mm -hmm. integrated pilot programs, um, you know, things like that, working with NASA, working directly with a government body or something like that, something where mm -hmm. the FAA is getting some benefit out of it um, on the side, you know, whether it's some data that they're collecting or close observings or even just meetings back and forth, you know. Um, it's, it's like if you want anything more difficult outside of those three categories we just mentioned, um, you know, there might be a, uh, a fourth one or fifth one that's kind of sneaking in there, which would be the drone light show, the multiple operation or multiple yeah. operations, UAS. Uh, right. But that one's still slightly small. Yeah. But yeah, it's, yeah, the special waiver category is if you're yeah. not tied in directly with the FA, you're not going to get approved. It's just the yeah. bottom line. Like, it's a, yeah. It is like, a giant hurdle, that's for sure. You can do right. it, but it's going to take you a lot of time. I mean, uh, if you recall back, like talking to Roy Boyd for the 107.3 on Bravo, it took him, mm -hmm. like, I think he said three or four RFIs, like months of time. Right. And he he kept at it, which is great. And he, yep. he got saw it through. Uh, but it really does kind of take a significant amount of time. So, yeah, anything right. other than those three... Uh, yeah, either, like you said, don't plan on getting it or just plan on it taking a long time, a lot of effort, you know, working with the FAA, RFIs, maybe denials, right. and then putting it back in the queue and, and so on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we've definitely had some experience with the special waiver <laughs> category. Um, so, yeah, it's, yep. it's definitely, definitely interesting. So, yeah, those three right off the top, night waiver, pair zero, ops over people not over moving vehicles either <laughs> so okay. and then high altitude uh yeah yeah that's uh, that's pretty much it what's on the table for waverable 107 that is obtainable with relative ease mm -hmm. you know everything else takes money technology time mm -hmm. you know patience <laughs> so yeah and uh, like i said th these happen i think uh we we make steps in the industry and then it kind of levels off again for a while and then mm -hmm. you know we're we kind of need the next step to happen. Maybe that'll be a remote ID, or maybe uh, maybe we'll see the ops over human beings rulemaking coming out in the next year or two. But yeah, then we'll make then we'll take another step, and then we'll kind of level off. So <laughs> just kind of how it goes. You get these periods where you, uh, it feels like nothing's happening, but uh, yeah, just behind the scenes. Forward. Hopefully, people are working hard, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I think that about does it for episode 23. It was a wonderful dark episode filled with night waivers. And <laughs> just like my video. <laughs> yeah, just like your video, just like the time that we're shooting this video. We typically shoot in the mornings, now we're shooting uh, at night. This will be a good episode. We're, we're just yeah. all over the place today, but it's good. <laughs> awesome. So without further ado, right, uh, take care. Fly safe. 